Hey, Tony from Bikeberry here. It's good to see you. Today, what we're going to talk about is replacing your whole clutch assembly. This is uh, not really a troubleshooting guide. This is more of a, when you want to replace your clutch, this is how you do it. Let's roll. Let's start off by seeing what you get when you order a clutch rebuild kit from us. So you get your clutch plate, your gear, get your clutch lever. This is your inner spring. You can see this lighter weight spring that goes between the plate and the gear, your flower nut, your bucking bar, the ball bearing at the end of your bucking bar, a couple large nuts, and a couple of toothed lock washers. I think that the best way to approach this is to experience it just like you would when you take your engine apart. So when you pop that case cover off, what are you going to see? Well, then we'll work on that. What I also did is I brought in engines that are in different, uh, you know, phases of the rebuild so that we could point to them and discuss anything. Even one where I cracked the case all the way open and I have it, you know, you can see the insides as well as the outside because I want you to know through this video what to expect. So it starts off with removing the flower nut. First, you got to remove this little screw that keeps it in place. Your adjustments, you can see these notches on here all the way around, you know, that's your adjustments for the pressure, but like, we'll do another video on that. This is more of to, you just want to replace the whole thing because you've worn it out. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Your spring. So as you can see, there's a nut here holding this on your clutch plate. So let's remove that next. So in this case, it's a three quarter inch socket and you're gonna want the breaker bar fit in here like that. And then I use these kind of channel locks to grab this direction and then break it like that. There's no damage to anything and it's a lot easier than <laughs> than your regular socket wrench. So this side has this toothed washer and the nut. So then the tool is the same for this side. Big threads, it's threaded into here. I like these kind of channel locks because I actually have this you know, indentation here and it grabs these studs without wrecking them. Um, turn this into here and I think it's done. It's threaded all the way. It's actually pulling the gear or the yeah the gear and the clutch up so i'm going to switch to this okay look at that again more keyways right but yeah check out that keyway matches up with that one and if i recall these are called woodruff keys so they're rounded I go in there in a kind of an angle and scooped out area. The drive sprocket. Sometimes you need to take an impact to get it loose. But use a big fat screwdriver. Most time you can get it out. So to do this initially, sometimes I'll actually hold the screwdriver in with my chin and I'll use this to turn it, to break it loose. So that's a little trick that you can do a star washer so we're going to switch the tool around to use the smaller threaded part now this one is tricky i've had a lot of trouble with these threading in there and then pull wanting to pull out so that's where we're gonna i think our breaker bar actually helps us in that case so i'm gonna grab a hold of my gear the rag channel locks. I'm gonna gently thread it in there so that I know it's all the way and I can't get any more in there. Just wanna make sure this is not cross threaded or anything in there, that it's fully seated in there properly. Okay, I think we're all the way down in there the best we can. So, see how far this goes in here. 14 millimeter socket back on here. Break the bar. Let's 
So you can see that there's a keyway in this one too, right here, and right there. Let's crack the case open. So we're gonna use our uh, Allen sockets. We'll just kind of go around the perimeter of it and start cracking things loose. Flip it over and do this side. There you go. You just got to knock it apart. All right. So you can see we got that out. I use a... Uh, <laughs> A plastic handle screwdriver so I don't damage any of the threads or anything on here so it works great um, I'm sure there's more sophisticated ways to do it I think we're good this uh, Woodruff key out here. so to get the spring out we're gonna use the vise set it in like that Just like that. Okay, as you saw in the vise, came off this direction on this side. See that? So what we'll do is that's the old one. Let's take the new one. You gotta identify the different sides, right? And the bearing is good. So we're going to press it back in. I like to take the flower nut and thread it all the way on here, like that. Then it gives you something to strike against that won't wreck anything. And while being mindful of, you know, the surfaces that are resting on your vise, you can feel it sitting firmly on there. Take a rubber mallet. And tap it all the way in place. See how it's all the way through now? And remove the flower nut. Looks good. We can take and put our key in here. Press your keyway in. See that? Nice and straight. Okay, so make sure that you had this in the correct position and this in the correct position. Let's reassemble our case back together. See? Like that. Sometimes a block of wood is good to use because then it won't get all scarred up on, you know, metal to metal. Forgot to mention, don't forget your gasket in between there. Because of this uh, monster spring in here, it's only going to go so tight together. So you have to get it on the bench and then start putting your case bolts back into it. This is where I like to use the ratchet socket drive thing. It's super awesome. Along with the screwdriver type, that way you can get things started out properly. So I would bounce around from each bolt to bolt, kind of uh, far away from each other. So I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna come in here and do this one next. Just till they're snug. Then I'll jump up here and do this one next. It's at the top of it. And I'll jump down here and do this one next. Just till they're snug, because you're, you're closing the gap on these two. Right here, okay? And the two halves. You'll feel like one you tighten will be loose now. <laughs> so just kind of keep going around until it's snug. Well, we got it pretty close together. You'll have your uh, final longer bolts here and here. Okay. 
Okay, you can see that the gap is closed up for the most part. I'm just gonna go around and keep tightening things just snug until they don't move anymore, really. So don't overdo it. Don't get a big, long-handled uh, ratchet that you can break something, just snug. All right, we've got our shaft in there with our spring. We've got our keys in there. We don't want to forget our keys. So the biggest thing that you want to do is get the point of it stuck in there, okay? Then you work, then you work your way in there till it's flush. Once our key's in there, then what we'll do is we'll go in and set a new sprocket in place. And that. And our nut. Just want to make sure everything is like not cross threaded or anything. Breaker bar, perfect for this. So usually you'll turn this a few times and then what it's going to do is it's going to spin internally. So it's a good time to flip it over and find your keyway, which is on this side here. You can see that. Get some light through there. You can see your keyway notch there. Get this down on here like that. And you're going to take your other washer and your new nut. It's good to use the new ones. The other ones, you know, have probably been under a lot of stress. So nothing wrong with replacing them. Removing, you can take a stud and put a couple of nuts on them and then place them in here like this. That'll keep this whole assembly from turning when you tighten it down. Now you may have to put it up here to go the other way, but either way, it'll stop it from turning. So once that's on there all the way, then you can probably put it on this side. Have to see here. Get things kind of backwards sometimes. Yep, that's it. So that's pressing everything together. See how less threads are in the nut? Okay, so I went ahead and put the gear in, put the screw back in, just like you took it apart. No, and then you uh, make sure the stud is sticking out far enough. Then you could take your new spring, place it in here, your new plate. Make sure it goes over the studs well. Put your flower nut on. All right. Nice having the new flower nut has a deeper groove than the old one. The old one was worn, got kind of rubbed on. <laughs> Go ahead and tighten it down. I tend to go until the threads are flush with the top is a good starting point, and then your adjustments later on can go up or down from that. Okay, so let's flip this over. We have a new bucking bar and we have a new ball bearing. Let's go ahead and grease those up and put them in there. Got our red and tacky grease. Take some with the screwdriver. We're gonna work it down in the... Where your ball goes in first. Okay, then we're going to shove more grease and this is oops and this is fresh then we have our new clutch arm so all that's nice and new push against it. this is the part that gets wore out on a lot of them right here so originally uh, you have this cover on there but when you get a rebuild kit I would just go ahead and order a machined aluminum version because why not they're just lots better 
Okay, before, before installing it, you're gonna wanna grease in here. That way there's the least amount of friction possible in this area. So I just cram it full of that grease. And even down in the top here. As much grease in there as you can. Kind of spin around to kind of wipe everything around in there. Yep, feels very greasy in there now. I got my magneto in, all that back in, so just do that, you know, in reverse of what you took it apart as. Uh, yeah, this is good. So we've got everything on this side, check it out. So what you wanna do once you get this installed is see how much pressure and spring back you have. Like this feels perfect. Just like that, that's what you want. So now that you've replaced everything, your engine is back together, everything's tight, all the bolts are right, you've got your magneto back in, you've got your gear back in here, right to your crank, everything's good. Your new uh, whole assembly's on here. You got it, um, you know, tight where it feels it's right. You can leave this off for a second, get, get the rest of the engine back together, get it mounted on the bike. Uh, test it out and adjust it if you want, and then put this guy in there to make it permanent. Go ahead, assemble the rest of your engine, get all your covers back on, get your top end back on. Uh, then when you reconnect your clutch, you can get a new clutch cable in there, throw this sucker on there, and you'll be riding good. Well, there you have it, a whole new clutch assembly. It'll all be fresh and good to go. What we're gonna do in future ones is we're gonna go into specific things and upgrades that you can have with your clutch. So be on the lookout for that in the coming weeks. Let me know in the comments below if this video helped you because I know I never really have found good instruction on this. and I had a lot of trial and error to figure this out. Uh, so let me know if that helps you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't because we've got a lot of good content coming out this summer that I think is really gonna help you with your summer ride. So till next time, let's roll.